So here's my Uber app and then here's my Lyft driver app. For Jordan Samuels, driving Uber meant she could quit her job at a fast food restaurant, buy a car, finance her education. Now she hopes driving for Lyft will mean more money rolling in. It's very slow during the day for Uber drivers after rush hours, so if I can have them both on at the same time and whatever one comes first, I'm happy to take that, take that ride. And that's allowed. Drivers are private contractors. They can choose when and who they work for. You know that there's going to be both. Uber and Lyft can compete against each other to kind of keep us um, and to make us work on their platform during prime time. Uber's reputation has taken a beating lately, from complaints about a toxic corporate culture to passengers concerned about safety, even a recent hacking scandal. Lyft is coming into the market as an alternative. It has positioned itself as an inclusive as well as a diverse company um, and a very empathetic company that really wants to create an atmosphere and a space of mutual respect between riders and drivers. In a statement, Uber says it's proud to have paved the way for ride sharing in Canada. And we welcome competition that encourages the use of more transportation alternatives. Driving for both services in California, Harry Campbell shares his experiences on his blog, The Rideshare Guy. He says Uber is likely nervous about Lyft expanding. Uber was a global company. They were in Latin America, they were in China, they were in Russia, in Canada, in Mexico, whereas Lyft was only in the United States. And now with Lyft's expansion into Canada, they don't necessarily have that differentiating factor. Uber may be the dominant player for now, but it will be up to customers and drivers to decide which service has the power to steer people in their direction for the future. Renee Filipponi, CBC News, Toronto.